The new NAFTA deal called the USMCA uh, appears to be stalled in Congress as the president is met with pushback, but not only from Dems, but even some, in, some of his own party. Are they playing politics or is this a legitimate fight? So joining us to discuss, we've got former trade official Steve Gill. Steve, good to see you. Uh, so the, the Dems are, are telling POTUS that they won't pass the new USMCA over disputes of labor practices in Mexico that can hurt American workers stateside. Is this just a ploy to block the president from a win? It's kind of hard to believe anybody in Washington would be playing politics. And in this case, as you point out, both Republicans and Democrats are raising questions about the issue. First of all, with the Democrats, they're demanding that the Mexicans make some reforms in their labor laws, which the Mexican parliament, uh, the Mexican government is in the verge of doing so. The, the Mexicans passed new laws dealing with transparency and dealing with uh, requiring the, the voting for labor union leadership to be with a secret ballot. So they've passed some reforms yesterday that will now now head to the desk of President Oberthor. The Democrats are not yet saying whether the reforms are going to be good enough. President Trump himself is saying we need to look and see whether they will now enforce the reforms mm. they're putting in place to determine whether or not they've done enough. But I think both the Democrats and President Trump feel like Mexico is moving in the right direction, even though they'll have to continue that progress. Then on the Republican side, you have Chairman Chuck Grassley of Iowa, who is demanding that the tariffs that President Trump imposed on steel and aluminum, both with respect to Canada and Mexico, be released completely in order for the Republicans to vote for this. Because right now we're charging taxes on imports of aluminum and steel from Mexico and yeah. Canada. They were both under the impression those would be released when a deal was done. Well, we're now at the point of getting a deal ratified, and Chuck Grassley and other Republicans are saying, fine, release the tariffs. Trump's a little slow to want to do that. <laughs> so you don't think he'll, the president will play ball there? Uh, noticeably silent lately, uh, the Canadians, mm. Trudeau hasn't really uh, chimed in much about the new uh, the USMCA. Uh, how, do, how do they play into all of this? Because there's tariffs happening on the northern side of the fence, too. Yeah, the North remembers, as we may remember from Game of Thrones, and they remember the, <laughs> the past conflicts with the, with the U.S. You, you have Mexico that really rushed into a deal with the U.S., and, and the Canadians were kind of sitting on the sidelines when they realized that the U.S. and Mexico were about to do a deal to reform NAFTA on their own. Canada said, hey, wait for us. We want to be part of this deal. The most interesting thing, I think, with respect to Canada is there are provisions of this uh, new NAFTA that require that if Canada starts negotiating with China, and a trade deal, they have to let us know, and either party can withdraw within six months. They have to withdraw from the trade deal with us if they start and get a deal with China. So it, it's kind of a deal with the Canadians that we're saying, look, you can deal with us or you can deal with China, but you got to pick a side. And right now, Canada's picking to do a deal with us. Ah, see, there's China again, the elephant, the very <laughs> large elephant in the room. We can't forget them because no matter what kind of a deal we broker here in, in North America, China's always going to play a part. So we can't forget them. Uh, but lastly... Yeah, they, they have the year of the monkey, the year of the snake. I don't know if they even have a year of the elephant, but this would be that year. That they, they are certainly the elephant, that's for sure. And lastly, Steve, um, moments ago, Pelosi <clears throat> and Schumer emerged from the White House saying they brokered a deal with the president for a $2 trillion infrastructure initiative. Is this a sign of future bipartisanship, or could this potentially maybe even hurt them in 2020 by cooperating with Trump? I mean, shouldn't this be a good thing? Well, the devil's in the details, and, and the Democrats have been seen as opposing anything or everything that Trump is for, and impeachment and investigation isn't going to win them votes, particularly the blue-collar workers, particularly in those battleground states of the Ohio's, the Michigan's, the Pennsylvania's, the Wisconsin's in 2020. They need to show they're actually doing something, and this massive transportation and infrastructure bill would be a, a sign that the, both sides are getting something done that's going to make voters on both sides of the aisle happy. But but keep in mind, as we always talk, uh, Manila, about these trade deals and everything else, the devil is in the details. They've agreed to do an infrastructure deal. How are they going to pay for it? What does that include? <laughs> what does it not include? And, and what regions and battleground states are going to be included and not included? Yeah, I'm excited to dig into what that deal, deal might look like after the show today. I'm sure there's hundreds of pages to comb through, and we'll have you back to discuss uh, the devil's work as it were. <laughs> Steve Gill, as always, appreciate your insights on this. Thank you so much. Thanks, Manila. 
Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.